Okay, so we're back at the ground source heating job and now we're at the stage where we need to decommission the existing system and connect it up to the new system that's in the external barn and commission everything. So the first step is, is to um, convert the old vented system to the mains pressurized system. So pretty similar to what you would do with a combi version. We're gonna be taking out the hot water cylinder and capping the hot water distribution pipe. We will then tee into the hot water distribution pipe work elsewhere within the household to pick up the new unvented cylinder in the external barn. And with the cold water main, we're gonna be disconnecting the vented uh, cold water tanks up in the loft and then linking over the cold water main to the cold water distribution pipe work uh, to make the whole property mains water pressurized. Okay, so this is a current vented cylinder they've got in this property. We're having to siphon it out because the drain off is faulty. So what we're gonna be doing is converting the system over to mains pressure. So the current hot water distribution pipe work from the top of this cylinder, we're gonna be capping at a low level and losing the vent. And then we can tee in elsewhere on the hot water pipe work. And then the current cold water main, which is feeding the tanks in the loft, we're gonna be linking that over to the cold water distribution pipe work from the tanks, which will then pressurize the whole house. So just to show you where we've teed in for the hot and cold supply and backfilled it, um, behind this wall here, there used to be a basin. So what we've done is in the area cupboard, we've cut the pipe work and then we've teed onto the system here. Okay, so whenever you're converting a low pressure vented system to a mains pressure system, you need to double check the showers. So quite often customers will have digital showers and these processors or brains, they're only suitable for the type of water pressure you're running currently. So at the moment, this is a low pressure system. So this processor is designed for a low pressure water coming in. So when I convert the system, this will no longer be able to function. In fact, the chances are it will probably leak. So. The customer has actually found a company that will um, convert these over to mains pressure. So you can either do that or you can speak to the manufacturer of the shower and they'll provide you um, with a mains pressured alternative, obviously at an additional cost. So just bear that in mind whenever you're converting the system over. So these two cold water tanks here, they're providing cold water down to the downstairs bathroom. So what we're gonna be doing is disconnecting the cold water main to that ball valve over there and then joining that cold water main onto this cold water distribution pipe work and that will then send cold water main pressure down to the downstairs bathroom. Right, so all the cold water tanks are out now and I've just got to identify which pipe needs to join onto which and I can start getting it all piped up. Okay, I've got the cold water main connected to the old cold water distribution pipe work now from the cold water tank. It's always worth putting an isolation valve at this point because from here onwards, this would never have been cold water mains pressurized. So there's a good chance you might have a few teething problems when you pressurize it up. So if ever you've got a leak or a problem, you can quickly come up here and isolate it. So the cylinder's been removed now and Bailey has made good progress piping up all the radiators. So we had a bit of an issue before where a lot of the central heating radiator towers were gonna be combined behind the cylinder and obviously we couldn't access it until the cylinder was removed. So we've had to do this bit last and Bailey's done a very good job of getting it all piped up and joining it all together. Okay, so Quite a lot of these pipes that were just poking through the floor here are actually uh, from the radiators. So 
originally we put the central heating in first but because the existing system was still up and running with the cold water tanks and the vented cylinder we couldn't actually uh, join up the radiators to the main flow and return so we're just getting to that point now where we're starting to join everything together in the points we couldn't access so yeah there's just some central heating pipe we're going along here and then just picking up some butylene over there just need to get that uh, clip back down and then yeah just going to go around tighten everything up and get ready to fill the system up okay so we've got the cold water all live now and that seems to be fine so we're on to the hot water so i'm just following this pipe work back on the top of the unvented cylinder and i can see that it's just isolated down here where it goes into the ground so once i open up these this should then send it all the way through to below the manifold cupboard where we've got it isolated so i just want to say how much i appreciate these tags on these isolation valves they all correspond to a plan that i've been given and i just think it's really really good so well done for that okay i've got the water on in the bar now and i've just opened up the isolation valves that come in at the bottom of the manifold cupboard so this pipe work is now live which is great it doesn't look like there's any leaks thus far so that is now live to the point of entry where there is two 15 mil isolation valves inside which will then allow me to fill up the bathrooms okay so all the isolation valves are on now system on the domestic hot and cold is full up so just going to go and run all the outlets to make sure they're all right Okay, so we're about to start filling up the central heating system. I've temporarily wired in the pump because the electrician's not been yet. Because it's running off a thermal store, it only really requires a pump to be operating for me to manually start heating up the system. So I've got that wired in. And what I've done is I've turned a flow and return on from the barn into the manifold where the extension is. And at the moment, I've just got it isolated above the filter and the pump so we'll have one final check inside make sure we're happy and then we'll start filling it up so this is where the flow return hot and cold come into the building and then this is the start of our central heating run As you can see here runs along punches through that wall there and then we're just picking up this white new column rad so upstairs it's new column radiators and downstairs it's reclaimed cast iron rads Okay, so the central heating's all full up now and the pump's operational. Got it temporary wired just so we can pull some heat from the thermal store and we are starting to get heat come through, which is excellent. So we've got the central heating full up at the moment at one and a half bar and we're just purging and balancing the system. And other than that, it's gone really well. And there's some big cast iron radiators in there, so it took a long time to fill up. So, the last jobs we got to do are we need to insulate all this copper pipe work and the pipe work runs that go into the property and then once the screed has had a bit longer time to dry um, we'll be able to operate the underfloor heating, uh, raise it up in increments and uh, make sure it's all working correctly.